This is a Punnett square, and right now it just looks like a bunch of crazy letters inside some boxes. But today we're going to talk about how this genetic picture actually helps you understand what the chances are of your ch children having sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease. So yesterday we talked about gene shopping and how every single one of your children is offered the same options from both you and your partner. So geneticists and doctors alike use this square to actually tell you what the percentage is that during your gene shopping experience your child will select sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease. So in this example, I'll just take it all the way back to an empty Punnett square, and what this shows is across the top is the genes that the mom gives. So we'll just call that mom. And in this situation, I'll use my own genes, and I will offer an adult hemoglobin gene, healthy, and a sickle hemoglobin gene. So my genotype, remember the genes that I offer, is AS. That means I have the sickle cell trait. Over here in blue are, on this side, are the dad's traits that they're offering their child. And in this example, my husband is offering an adult hemoglobin and a sickle hemoglobin. So when you label the top and the side with what the mom and the dad offer, then you can see what the options are that the child can pick from. Remember we had our little trays yesterday. Well today this actually just takes those trays and turns it into a diagram. So it's just a basic multiplication. I have an A here and an A here. So in this box I would offer our child, our child could pick a, A hemoglobin. So AA is completely healthy, completely void of any sickle cell trait or disease at all. So I have one option of AA or healthy hemoglobin. Now if we go across here, I could also pick one healthy hemoglobin from my dad and a sickle hemoglobin from my mom. And then I would have the sickle cell trait also known as AS. Now, if I picked the, I also have a choice of picking the sickle hemoglobin from my dad. Oops. One of the things about these genetic squares is that they like to go in alphabetical order. So, although S could come first, I'm going to use the A first because they always talk about it like that. So, I picked, an, I could pick an adult hemoglobin from my mom and a sickle hemoglobin from my dad, right? Same result, sickle cell trait, but I just picked it from a different order. I actually got the sickle cell this time from my dad and the adult healthy hemoglobin from my mom. Now that last square means I picked a sickle hemoglobin from my dad and a sickle hemoglobin from my mom. So that would leave me with sickle cell disease. So this, these are the four options that every child you can have could possibly pick when they travel down that gene shopping aisle that we talked about yesterday. So if we look at this, we see we have one chance of picking AA, which is healthy. We have two, here and here, t chances of picking AS, which is just the trait or carrier. And we have one opportunity of picking full-blown sickle cell disease or SS. Now the nice thing about the Punnett square for sickle cell is that it's divided into four equal parts just like a dollar is. So just like there are four quarters in a dollar, there are four parts to the Punnett square in sickle cell. So that means that each one of these is worth 25%. So that's the chance that your child has. Each square is a 25% chance that every child when they go gene shopping can pick this. Remember it is every child not a one in four chance that your child will have sickle cell and that's that. So that means that I have, we're going to go back down here, since there's only one box for AA I have a 25% chance of my child picking healthy hemoglobin. AS, remember there was two boxes, these two, So 25 and 25 is 50, so I have a 50% chance that my child will have sickle cell trait. And there's only one box of SS, so that meant I had a 25% chance that my child would have sickle cell disease. Really, really important to understand here that this 
chance, these percentages in the Punnett square is every single child, every single time. Just like we talked about yesterday, every child goes back through that supermarket of life and has the same options that the child before them had. They reset with every child. This just takes what we talked about yesterday using the little tools and turns it into what get the genetics counselor and the doctors will actually be presenting to you based on your results. So let's do one more Punnett square using a couple of different options and see what we get. So let's pretend that now we have a different mom and dad. Bear with me as I erase. And the mom has actual ha actually has sickle cell disease. So we learned that that is SS. Okay? Those that her genotype, she got a sickle from her mom and a sickle from her dad. And this partner in her scenario, he has AA. So he has perfectly healthy hemoglobin and he's not even a carrier. So if we go through here real quick and see what are our options. Well in this box I've got an A and an S, right? I got a, a healthy from my dad and a sickle from my mom. So that's sickle cell trait. In this box I have an A and an S, A from my dad, sickle from my mom. That kid could have picked that, sickle cell trait. Here I've got an A and an S. You see a pattern arising here? Another sickle cell trait. And the last one, A across, S down. So my odds here are completely flat. If I have a child, if I have a, a parent that has, one has sickle cell disease and the other has healthy hemoglobin, there's a 100% chance that your child will have sickle cell trait, that they will be a carrier. However, there's an equal 100% chance that your child will not have sickle cell disease. So knowing your trait status is really vitally important because it shows you what the possibilities of having a child with sickle cell really are. In hindsight, if we do this again, and let's say the mom, the dad has healthy hemoglobin, AA, and the mom, I'll use myself in this situation, has just the trait, it is impossible for that ba for any of your babies to ever have sickle cell disease because there are not enough S's. The important part to remember here is I must receive a sickle cell trait or, or other hemoglobin uh, trait from that's unhealthy from both my parents, right? I cannot just have the sickle cell trait in adults. So here I have 50% chance of having healthy hemoglobin and 50% chance of being a sickle cell trait carrier. Now, it does not change, the, the percentages don't change if dad has a different type of hemoglobinopathy. So we talked about a couple days back, we talked about, well, what if, what if you have, uh, hemoglobin C trait or beta zero thalassemia. Same thing happens, same odds. Okay, so I've got a 25% chance of having healthy hemoglobin, a 25% chance of having the sickle cell trait, a 25% chance oops, of having and this looks kind of funky. We don't see this a lot. This is healthy hemoglobin combined with beta zero thalassemia. So I have beta zero thalassemia trait. So I have 25% chance of healthy hemoglobin, 25% chance of sickle cell trait, 25% chance of beta thalassemia trait, which means I'm just a carrier for beta thalassemia. And then I have this 25% chance of having SBO or sickle beta zero thalassemia. This right here means that I have a type of sickle cell disease. So although the Punnett squares can look very complicated, all they really are doing is mapping out the different possibilities every single one of your children can choose during their gene shopping experience. Check us out on the web at hopeforscd.org and stay tuned as we travel into the world of complications here in sickle cell disease.